Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mazatrol Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil, and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Mazatrol. If you want to see more of this type of content, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. In this video, I'm going to switch over to the milling side of this machine and show you how to program and mill a hex in the end of a bar. Alright, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to utilize an existing program and program the hex on the end of demo part number one, which I have it called up already. So program. So here's demo part one. And in this area, I just got done drilling, uh, and in this area, I just got done drilling a 1 inch 130 hole in the end of the part using the manual process. So let's go to the figure check. So here's the part. And what I want to do is continue programming on the end of this part. So what we're going to do is go to program. Push the program button to get into edit mode. Go down to the end of the program and erase the end process. So right button, erase, input, down arrow, and then push shape in. So now we're back into the edit, edit mode. So what we want to do is push the three arrows twice. That gets us into the milling menu on this machine. So we have milling drill as an option, milling tap, bore, milling groove is MGV, LCT is line centered, so it runs the end mill right down the middle of the tool path. Uh, right is uh, G42. In and then left is G41. And then milling manual process. So what we're gonna do is push the left button because we wanna climb mill this part. So push left and then machining part in which direction? We're gonna mach be machining it on the face of the workpiece. So width of the groove so on this old machine, it thinks everything is a groove and it will not allow stock on either side like a mill process does. The newer lathes don't have this limitation, but on this old machine, uh, the groove is what we're left with. So the tool I want to use is going to be a half inch end mill. So that's what I'm going to put down for the width of the groove. So 0.5, cutting depth. If we go up here, I'm going to cut down to 700 thousandths on this 2 inch diameter. That's what I want to do. So 0.7 is our, going to be our depth. Finish surface roughness. I'm going to leave this blank. So the finish feed rate is going to be my roughing feed rate. Uh, that way I can control it a little more predictably. Uh, these tend to go a little fast for my liking. Finish allowance on the axis direction. So when it's going to mill this part, it's going to mill a groove, but on the end of the end mill, this is where the finish allowance is. So if I type in 10 thousandths for the finish, then it's going to keep that tool 10 thousandths away from the total depth. Uh, surface speed for rough cut, I can push auto for this. And that's gonna run it at 1200 surface feet per minute, roughing and finishing. On, a, on this machine, I'm limited to 12, uh, 2500 RPM for the milling tools. 
So anything over about 350 surface feet per minute is going to max out the spindle. Feed rate for roughing on the radial, so this is as the tool is milling across, I want to change this to five thousandths. And then feed rate for roughing on the axis direction, this is the plunging feed rate for how fast it plunges into the workpiece. Because I'm going to be starting off the edge of the workpiece, I'm going to actually increase this plunging feed rate to 20 thousandths per rev so it plunges in quickly. Uh, roughing tool number. So I have an end mill set here on tool 10. And right here on the tool data screen, you must put in the end mill diameter exactly what it is. So 0.5. This screen is what compensates for the end mill size. It's not the program. It's on this particular screen. So right here, if we change this to a quarter inch, then it would wipe out the part because I have a half inch end mill in the machine. So this needs to be exactly what the machine has in it. Uh, this area here, tool nose radius, we can clear that zero because that's not the area that it's going off. Uh, the white arrow for the milling side is MO3. It's backwards from the turning side. So the white arrow determines which direction that tool is going to run. So go back to the program. So we're going to rough it with tool 10, offset number 1. Finish it with tool 10, offset 1. So what, it's, what we're going to do What we're going to do is program this hex and it's going to basically take a spring pass when it runs the finish tool. We can program the hex bigger if we wanted to leave stock on the surface of the hex. But in this case we're just going to rough and finish it on the same one. So on this older machine so the first thing we're going to do is push line, starting point on X. So this is what determines the size of the hex. So this is important. The hex that I want to mill is 1 inch 740 across the flats. So the distance from the center line to the flat is 870. But this machine doesn't program to the middle of the flat. It programs to the corners of the hex. So it's going to program from this corner to this corner, and this corner to this corner, and so forth. So we need to calculate this length from the center to the corner of the hex, which is our C dimension. So if we take 870 times a constant 1.1547 equals 1 inch 0046. So 1 inch and 4 and 6 tenths. So this is the number we're going to program and it's not half of the hex. People make that mistake and then wonder why the hex doesn't come out right. So if you get nothing else out of the video, this is the number you need to go by. So starting point as a radius of x is 1.0046. Starting point of y, which is the angle, so we're going to start at 0 degrees and then go around the part. Starting point on z is going to be the face of the part. Final point on x is going to be 1.0046. And the final point on the angle to go from here to here is going to be a negative 60 degree value. So we have to put in the minus 60 in order to 
slime cut using the left face on the outside of a hex. If we put a positive number, then the end mill would be on the other side and it would be on the inside of the workpiece. So for milling a hex, keep in mind it has to be a negative value. So now the next thing we're gonna do is do a second line. On the older machines like mine, the starting point is here and the final points are over here. On the newer machines, it'll say starting point STP here and then it'll have line, line, line down on the bottom of it. It won't have a double line at the top. So that's the big difference between the newer machines and this older T3 control. So what we need to do is describe each of these six corners from 0 degrees, 60, 120, 240, 300, and 360. So 1.0046 minus 120, down arrow, line 1.0046 minus 180, down arrow, line 1.0046, minus 240, down arrow, line 0046, minus 300, down arrow, line 1.0046, and minus 360 where we started. So down arrow and push shape in, and then end. And now what we want to do is look at the workpiece figure. So push the right button, push figure check, and then push the display mode. What the display mode does is it rotates the face of the part so we can see the hex. So here's the side of the end mill, and then this is the face, and it's going to mill in a clockwise direction around the part. So now let's go to program check. Well, for this part, let's go back to program. We've already run the turning process and we've already run the drilling process. So because this is a one-off piece, let's just erase that part of it. So right button, erase, input, right button, erase, input. So now the only thing we have left is the milling. And if we go back to figure check, because I had the store button lit up, it still kept the workpiece shape and then shows the milling side. So now let's run the graphics. So go to program, check, and check continue. And there you go. There's our workpiece. The corners are around a two inch diameter and then the flat is the 1.740. One thing that we can do on the screen to measure the flats, we can put some false geometry in here. So let's do that now. Race, down arrow, shape in. So now let's do bar stock, bar out, So linear, 1.1.740.7. 1 so what I just drew was a diameter, 1 inch 740 in diameter, 700 thousandths long. So now if we go back to the figure check, it's going to draw a tangent circle to the bottom of that hex. So now let's refresh the screen it's going to erase this part of it and leave the inside of the the hex circle
So scale input. So this is the way you can use the machine to draw a diameter to verify that the hex is the size that you want. So once we're done with that, erase the false geometry and we're ready to run the part. So this is tool number 21, program file. Tool number 21 is already set, so we don't need to reteach the Z. So we're ready to run the workpiece. So let's do that now. All right, that's ready to go. Cycle start. It's done roughing. Let's shut off the coolant so we can see more what's going on. Feeding into the workpiece. And there's our finished workpiece. That's how to mill a hex in an old Mazak lathe. If you like what you see, go ahead and push that subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. Thanks for watching.